Well, it, a technology standard can be applied in any jurisdiction, you know, a state, one province, or a state. The United States has used technology standards in the past for coal-fired power plants, for example. Great. But if you want to talk more, secure my car in there. And I remember meeting you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Hi, Rob Stowe. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm familiar with it. Yeah. Right. Do you have a card? Good. Very good. Yeah. I know Andre. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you you worked with Andre. Yeah. Here's my card. Yeah. <laughs> good. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Dave. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Swapna. Right. Hi. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to leave, leave I have this afternoon. Yeah. 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 yeah, phone or Skype, sure. Yeah, just send me an email, maybe early next week. We can set up a time. All right, perfect. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thank Be careful. So yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, you have to, yeah, uh, his uh, flight got canceled, and, and the only oh, wow. reasonable option was uh, the whole point of day, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Oh, good. Good. Thanks. Yeah. It's great. Um, well, let's stay in touch. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Thanks for coming. Good to see you again. Oops. Sorry? Well, I'm not super rushy now. I think we need to get out of here, though, because there's another side of it. Um, do you need a copy of this print by any chance? You, if you don't want to carry it, that's fine. I think yeah. it's okay, good. I, Dale, could you hold on just a second? I do need to pack up and move because the, another group needs to come in. Um, yes, that's just what I'm just what I'm, just what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just a second, I need to make sure.
Video, I told her that. I don't understand the speed of time. From the video, still. What, what time? The what time? I don't understand. Yes? No, no, no. You come back here and you, 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 you give. You know? You remember? Yes. No. But if you want, if you want a file, you, you come, you give me the pen. Yes. From today, from this meeting. Ah, okay. Ah, just finish. Okay. That's okay. It's perfect. Excuse me, excuse me for my English. Okay. Okay. It's better than the Finnish meeting. Du müsstest mir jetzt sozusagen, wenn er zu Chef sagst, du müsstest jetzt sozusagen bis 3 Uhr irgendwie meinen Termin coachen. Das ist nichts. Hast du meinen Termin verlängert? Ja, Yes, but it's better. It's what what meeting do you want? When you just finish, got it. When you just finish, you give me the, the program, the speech, okay? Excuse me for my English. I. <laughs> live right now but it's okay because we'll edit them later but i just want to sh show you the page of this one please don't don't echo press this the red cross here okay i'll just hide minimize it and also for for the presentation where's the remote here it is this is the part this is the remote for the slides you have to keep this on so it works and then maybe you can the audio information yeah uh, could you give me uh, the, the picture? Can you draw the sign with an end and we make my end? This piece, can I do this? Oh. We can use this. Oh. I don't think, I don't know, maybe they'll need them maybe later. Uh, 
Paulo, onde é que está o meu nome? E o meu? Tu passas para o meio e tira o nome e passas para o meio. Mas que é? Tira só o nome e deixo o ministro de um dia? Não, tira o nome. Não consegue superioridade, dá para isso e dá para muito mais. Eu só sei que cada dia passa com mais peças. Ah, sorry, sorry. Os teus doutores já estão a dizer coisas. Francisco, o que Ok, vou só abrir o. Não, não, não. Deixa-me. Olha, mas eu falo, eu falo em português, não é? I have ready mind. Sim, eu falo em português. Ou não? Eu falo em inglês. Ah, eu falo em inglês. Ah, eu falo em inglês. Ah, ok. Em inglês ou em inglês? Em inglês. Em inglês, não é? Eu falo em inglês. Inês, falamos em inglês? Falamos em inglês. Falamos em inglês. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is, uh, is Francisco Ferreira from uh, Zero, the Association for the Sustainability of the Earth System. I would like to acknowledge uh, you coming to this uh, event uh, that uh, is uh, promoted um, by um, several institutions, um, in, in particular, uh, the Ministry of uh, Environment and the new, uh, the new University of Lisbon, uh, where I'm also uh, a professor in, at the College of Sciences and Technology. Uh, I would like to, to first present our uh, speakers today. Uh, the, the, the title of the event, as you know, it's um, a common, intangible uh, natural heritage, a platform for ethics and justice on climate change, and our use of the Earth system. Um, I hope you will understand uh, what we'll be talking about after uh, one hour and a half that we'll stay here. Um, and, uh, and first, I would like to, 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 to present the different speakers. Uh, on my right, uh, João Pedro Matos Fernandes, the Portuguese Minister of uh, Environment. Uh, Paul Magalhães, on my left, from the New University of Lisbon, from the College of uh, uh, Social Sciences and Humanities. On, um, then on, on, on my left, on my right, uh, Natalie Musi, uh, she's uh, the, the co-chair of the Common Home of Humanity, 
She's uh, an expert in sustainable development and space activities. Professionally, she works at European Special Agency. Um, and then uh, Alexandro Gali uh, from uh, the Global Footprint uh, Network. Uh, so uh, without uh, further ado, I, I will ask uh, uh, the, the, the Portuguese Minister of Environment uh, to tell us uh, what is the, the, the framework that we are announcing here at uh, COP22. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I will speak in English, but before that, just a few words in Portuguese, if you don't mind, because lots of people coming from my country here in the room. Uh, e começo por cumprimentar muito uh, os teus deputados e agradecer muito a vossa presença. Começo também por cumprimentar o Francisco Ferreira uh, e o Paulo de Milhães e todos aqueles portugueses que resolveram juntar-se a este projeto e uh, a esta apresentação hoje. So, uh, I'm a minister for almost one year, uh, and the first thing I want to say at, is that this is the most amazing project that was presented to me uh, since uh, I'm in the Ministry of Environment. This is really an ambitious one, uh, leader by ambitious guys. Uh, some of them are Portuguese, uh, but this is not uh, a project for Portugal, as you'll see. It's a project for, for the whole world uh, and for the whole humanity. Uh, the last thing I want to say, and so sorry for that, but uh, just after uh, closing this small speech, I do have to leave because I have a plane to Lisbon, but I think that this is a very good reason to run the risk of losing the flight because uh, for me it was impossible not to be here today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to greet you and welcome you uh, in this side event. I believe that what you'll hear today uh, will bring you to another level of awareness regarding the use of our planet and what needs to be done. Recent scientific studies named planet boundaries determine the secure levels to maintain our planet in the Holocene period, with some scientific communities defense that we are already in the Anthropocene. <clears throat> Those nine planet boundaries include climate change, ozone deflection, atmospheric aerosol loading, ocean acidification, global freshwater use, chemical pollution, land system change, rate of biodiversity loss, and biogeochemical loading. Ladies and gentlemen, when the scientific community show us that we have to be able to maintain our planet functioning inside those security levers, or the life as we know will change dramatically. And then we do have to act. And that action must involve the international recognition of those security standards of the Earth systems as our common heritage and its recognition in the international legal framework. This is the first new in this speech. But this needs to have consequences. Therefore, we must link those planet boundaries to our use of the resources and establish the necessary methodologies and indicators that translates our choice into consequences to the equilibrium of the Earth system. This approach will be further developed in this event. Moreover, the Earth system must have a governance system within the United Nations, of course, that establishes the limits of the use of the resources between nations and develops schemes of incentives to make the governance system works and brings effective results. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to announce that Portugal was the first nation associated to this vision, a vision that will transform the current paradigm of use of resources to a paradigm of resources production. A vision that needs to arise internationally and be implemented if we aim to preserve the life as we know. Ladies and gentlemen, you might say it's a very ambitious goal. I do agree with you. We will certainly Throughout this process, come across many obstacles in the international consensus of the implementation of this vision. 
it is enough to recall the small steps taken since 1992 at the Rio conference mm -hmm. until 2015, where finally, within the framework of the Paris Agreement, we have been able to give an effective boost to the fight against climate change. Mm -hmm. Let us have no illusions, but let us be aware that the evolution of humanity always born with aggrandizing visions. And I do believe that this is one aggrandizing visions. And I'm, uh, for me, it's very easy to say so because it was not my vision at the beginning. They bring this idea to me. So to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, I do invite you to be a part of this vision and bring your nations to this urgent action to maintain our Earth system. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, uh, dear minister. Um, we now have the, the, the presentation by uh, Paul Magalhães, uh, The Common Home of Humanity as a Legal Construction Based on, on Science. Paul, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for this, uh, this invitation, and, and it is a pleasure to discuss here, which is our common home. Usually we intend our common home as our planet, and this planet could not work as our common home if we don't have an Earth system in the favorable state. So the first conception that we have must to talk about, it's which is the difference between the special territorial dimension of the Earth and the quality of the Earth system. And this is basic to understand we will talk about during this session. This is the first change of conception. Uh, usually, uh, we understand that the glo global commons and in the legal point of view, the legal commons are the leftover of the territorial division. Today, in legal terms, we have the oceans, the, the, the deep sea, uh, the Antarctica, the, the, the outer space are common home of humanity. They are a, a big question if climate is not a climate system, is not a, glo a, 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 a global common that is inside and outside all sovereignties. And this is a big legal question because for the first time in international law, we are facing goods that exist simultaneously inside the sovereignties and outside the sovereignties. And are, they are intangible. They are not territorial goods. And this is a very structural question that could be on the base of this, our difficulty to address these questions in international law. So to understand this, we have to understand the history of, of Earth. In our Earth, in our planet, uh, the Earth system does not li was like we have today. Uh, we, our, our planet has 2.6 2. 2. billion years, and only on the last 10,000 years, we have the conditions on Earth to that humanity to make agriculture and to build civilizations. We humans, we live on Earth more or less 200,000 years, and only on the last 10,000 years, we have biogeophysical conditions, uh, climate stability on Earth that allow us to build civilization, to build culture, to have agriculture, to plant one, one, one plant uh, in the land, and to have the result of this work in the same year. Before that, it was impossible to do this on Earth because we have no CO2 enough to make agriculture on, on Earth. So we are not talking about territorial dimension. And for law, for law, we have two objectives of, of law in, in nature. One is space. When we protect an area, you say this area are protected by law. We have the boundaries of countries that is a territorial concept, is a territorial object of law. We have species, we can protect species, but we cannot uh, yet protect biogeophysical conditions. And it, it, it's about this that we talk today. And 
this is the main concept. This is the main slide on our, our new site that is we, it's launched also today. We must distinguish the planet from that system. The planet is an area of uh, 510 uh, million of kilometers, uh, kilometers, square kilometers, and the system, we could have different systems, different states of the system in our planet. And we can, we are moving for a new state of the Earth system that could be, can't be, or probably will not be our common home. So the difference between the planet and the Earth system is probably our home, it's not a planet. Our home is Earth system in favorable conditions. And this is a great innovation. In, uh, could be a great innovation in environmental law. And this is also a, a conception that is already supported by science. And these, uh, some scholars of international law, like Simon Borg, they talk about intangible natural resources. Okay, to have a climate, uh, a climate system inside the boundaries is an intangible natural resource. This intangible natural resource do not care about boundaries. This is, they are inside the sovereignties, they are outside sovereignties, and they have no legal existence. And this legal, no legal existence has a lot of consequences in economical terms with externalities, something that disappear in the legal in existence. Uh, and we, this is what probably what we can, must do in the first place. So with no legal existence, we have no economical visibility, externalities, the, the, the harms and the benefits that we do to that system continue to, to, to have inc uh, economical invisibility. If, and if you have no economical visibility, they have no social, social existence. The question is, we will see uh, the, the work of forest, the work of biosphere does not exist in our society because does not exist in legal terms. So usually this is a problem, a structural problem that we do not usually see on, on the environmental issues. And this question, we, because health system is only one, we have no, we cannot separate uh, the earth system. Uh, for example, we spread the oceans from, from the climate and from bio, biosphere, and they are only one system, and we put CO2 on, on our atmosphere, the oceans get acidificated, uh, and so on. And in, in international law, acidification, there is no, it's not a problem for oceans because it's a question that starts on atmosphere. We have no uh, integrated approach to this problem. We can, we separate, and we are losing a, a connection between our strategy and the reality inter interconnect of, of that system. So probably these are the, 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 the last uh, 100,000 years in Earth. Uh, and you see there the last 10,000 years, the Holocene period, the difference between the, 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 the period before the Holocene period, the last glaciation, and you see the Holocene period. Our home is this, this one period. This is our home. Before this, there are several times that humans almost extinct in Earth. So our home, it's not the planet. Our home, it's these conditions. Uh, this is our home, the specific favorable state of the Holocene period. Uh, if we, if we, we are capable to make a difference between the physical planet and the favorable states, maybe we can find new solutions to address global questions. Huh? New theoretical solutions to imagine the alternative ways to manage our use of their system. Uh, this internal space is of our common, is our proposal. And uh, now is the question, how to bring this intangible space to international law, to the system, the social system. Before we have the planet boundaries uh, framework, in international law documents, we have a lot of conceptions talking about life support system, uh, uh, integrity of nature and other concepts, common interests of mankind. Uh, 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 we have a lot of definitions in international law 
talking about the sustainability of Earth. But we have no way, uh, a scientific instrument to make a new object of law because we have no boundaries. We have no, we cannot define what is uh, the life support system and what is the planet. After the work of planet boundaries that define the, the main uh, variable, co the controls of, of the Earth system, we have a, a, a scientific tool to build a new uh, instrument of law. So, the planet boundaries define what they call, the scientists call, the safe operating space of humankind. I think that the safe operating space of humankind is our common intangible home. And how to put this state of third system in our legal system, to connect that system with our legal system and after with our economical system. Probably we try to use uh, the, the concept of the uh, common heritage of mankind and to apply to this to this new concept to the news to the news concept of science uh, probably uh, the the uh, and to have a new value probably these are the biggest heritage that human can receive from nature uh, since the, all the existence of humankind is the intangible conditions of dollars and youth uh, this is a new value uh, that should be legally protected as international good, uh, as a, as a uh, autonomous legal good. Uh, so, we want to propose in UN that uh, the the state of the system is recognized as a common heritage of mankind, and not only to say this. Of course, we need the legal the legal support. We need the the legal recognition, but we need more than that. So, two questions made by other schoolers uh, of law. Uh, it's necessary to identify the legal status of climate. This was a question made in 2001 by Simon Borg uh, uh, in the UCN environmental law discussion. And he, he made also another question. We will gain anything for do so. Uh, for me, the fundamental answer is from Alexander Kiss, that is a very recognized professor in environmental law. That is, how we can admit that a good that belongs to no one may be governed by a specific law. In a social system, uh, when we talk about global governance, the first question is, what, what is the object of this global governance? Are the countries, are the territorial character, or these intangible conditions? Maybe this common home, these intangible conditions of the whole sense are or should be the new object of law of global governance. Without the legal existence, it's, there is no possibility to translate these global physical parameters in terms of rights and obligations of states, because they do not exist. Although the new legal recognition is a structural step to organize our Earth system, our use of the Earth system, it's not sufficient to achieve this goal. So, there's one major statement of Carl, uh, Carl Fox that says a significant part of this challenge is to make the work of biosphere visible in our society, in women actions and in financial and economic transactions. This is a very important question. And to achieve this, we need to recognize the benefits, the, uh, the Earth system, uh, the biosphere, biosphere services to give them a value and after to make a new system of accountancy. But they need to exist. And to exist, uh, the benefits that we collect from, from the Earth system, for, from the forest, they disappear, they, they, they disappear on, on the global system. So we need a global legal system to capture these benefits and to make a new system of accountancy. Uh, sorry. Uh, to do this, we need a new tool to make uh, a measurement. To, uh, if we can me measure something, we can manage it. We, without measuring, we cannot manage it. So uh, we need to include the set of biophysical control variables of the planet boundaries in only one unit. Uh, if we only make an approach, in, uh, a, a partial approach, we have a problem. We have a number of obstacles. One, one example that I like very much to give uh, from someone that works also with us from Planet Boundaries, uh, we are here talking about CO2 con control 
to control our, our emission of CO2 to, to get the climate stabilized. And if we achieve this goal, we, have, we, we could have problems with forests. Uh, they, in the last uh, report of Planet Boundaries, uh, the question of evapotranspiration and also, also the uh, albedo effect of boreal and tropical forests, we can have a typical a tipping point, an overturn point, not do the, the, the question of CO2, but the question of evapotranspiration on the forests and to have a, 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 a tipping point on climate system, not, for the, uh, not with the variable of, of CO2. So we need an integrated approach uh, to avoid this tipping point, uh, uh, a tipping point. The question is, the forests that are making this uh, ecosystem service, this biosphere service, worth zero in economic terms. Uh, the only, the only, the, uh, the only uh, way to put these forests in the GDP that, uh, of the countries that, uh, where these uh, ecosystems are, are, are located is in the day that they destruct the forest. And this is the, the most relevant question. Uh, as long with the value of the biosphere only is visible through its destruction, it's impossible to reach the civilizational journey from explorers and exploiters to guardians and managers. So this is my last slide. And after me, uh, we'll talk uh, Alessandra Valley from Global Footprint that is also working with us and with Planet Boundaries. Uh, to, because we are already working in this, this new tool, uh, an integrated tool, uh, a connection between planet boundaries concept and uh, footprint to find a new method. We need two planets and half, uh, but with the planet we have, which is the metric that could be used? To manage our... <clears throat> Thank you so much, Paolo, <clears throat> and thanks also for the support from the Portuguese government. And thanks to all of you to be, to be here. This is a very big uh, task and challenging task uh, that Paolo gave me. First is to speak under this light because I, saw ma I see many of you are doing this. Trust me, here is even like hotter. And the second, climate change maybe. <laughs> And the second uh, challenge is that what we are really indeed trying to, to measure is the intangible, as uh, Paolo has mentioned. So <clears throat> let me go quickly through this. Of course, um, let's say we are just at the beginning of a journey and at the beginning of uh, an attempt to develop this uh, that we call Earth System Accounting Framework, ESAF. And clearly, we are not here to present how we are going to uh, calculate this because, uh, well, we don't know yet <laughs> how to do that. So we are here to initiate a dialogue with the people and actually for co to call for the participation of whoever is involved and interested in collaborating with us in the development of this uh, Earth System Accounting Framework. So really what I'm trying to do is just to give some basic elements of where we are at right now maybe to stimulate a bit the conversation and to interest you to be involved uh, and participate with us. As Paolo mentioned, right now, all the benefits that are received from the Earth system or the damage that is done to the Earth system is non-existent. So the good question is, how can we measure and manage something which is this favorable state of the Earth system that we have experienced in the last 10,000 years that is intangible and not legally defined. So first of all, really the basic step of building such an accounting framework is that it is built, it is grounded in a legal recognition. So the idea of uh, having the earth system as legally recognized is really like the standard, the basic uh, step block that we need to do. Then I would like to make maybe some clarifications uh, in order to uh, discuss more on what we are trying to make. Uh, first of all, there is a very thin line in between the planet and the Earth system. Paolo has mentioned this uh, already, but I think I want to stress this. So we, we use this example. If you think at a computer, you have the hardware and you have the software. OK, so this is really like the difference that we are talking about. On one side, we have the planet, what we know, 
the geographical space, which is divided by uh, countries, sovereignties of the countries, so can be divided. But behind what is visible, what we see every day, there is a software, an intangible system that cannot be divided among the different, uh, the different countries. It belongs to everyone and it provides uh, the support to life to everyone. So really what we are trying to measure is not the visible, but the invisible, intangible uh, earth system. Now, of course, um, this is a bit of a, of a challenge. So the second clarification to make is that we are not actually aiming to measure the earth system, but we are aiming to measure what is our relationship with this earth system. How are we dealing with this earth system? What is the benefits that we are creating to it? Or more commonly, what is the damage that we are making to, to this earth system? So this is really at the center of this earth system accounting framework to, man, to measure how we, what are our relationship with the earth system. And of course, it is true now the new science that is emerging on the planetary boundaries concept that we can start to understand and to measure this earth system because the planetary boundaries in the end are expressed in terms of if you want control variables compared to um, a reference like a benchmark which is the holocene uh, like state of the earth system the favorable state of the earth system so our idea is to create an accounting framework that is made of four interconnected elements. A biogeophysical element, an economic element, a legal element, and a governance element. So it's really not just environmental accounting that we are speaking about, but is like the mix, the integration of all four elements. And I, well, I can foresee that this will take uh, quite some time to, uh, to be realized and also a lot of discussion to find political agreement behind this, uh, this concept. But that's basically uh, the path that we would like to explore and that we would like to, to propose with this uh, initiative. Now, I don't want to enter in the details of all of this, but I want to give you some information. So when we speak about the first element, the bio-geophysical uh, component, to me, there is already a challenge that we have, like a necessity to, bring the, to, to bridge the gap in between, from in, on one side, what is the scientific needs, what are the scientific needs for sustainability, which is basically to look at the system in an holistic and comprehensive way. And this has to be matched with the governance system the governance needs, because we know that most of the actions on the perturbing human activities cannot be done at the global level, but are done at the local level. So how can we bridge the gap in between the scientific needs for holistic approach and the governance political needs for local action? So the idea, of course, I mean, this is, this is the challenge. The, the, init the initial idea is to create at least for the biogeophysical element, a suite of indicators that are going to measure the extent to which the human activities deviate from the threshold of the favorable state of the Earth system in each of the nine boundaries. Here, I just made like one example, which is probably the most common uh, boundary we are uh, speaking, uh, which is related to the, to the conference, to the COP here, which is the climate change uh, boundary. So an idea would be to be able to identify what is the baseline, the global baseline. We know from now till 2050, what is the amount of carbon of uh, CO2 that can be released if we are to stay within the 1.5 degrees uh, increase in temperature. We can calculate what is the budget that is left in terms of CO2 to be emitted. There have been many calculations in the past uh, months. It spanned from 800 to 1,200 gigatons of CO2 in the next 40 years. So we can take these and we can derive annual budgets or per capita budget. And these will be, let's say, the, the baseline. Okay, Respecting this budget will basically mean that we are respecting the baseline, the, Holo the Holocene state uh, 
uh, of, of the planet. And we can then use uh, indicators like the carbon footprint, but we are not like bound to the indicators that right now, but we can use, we can quantify what is the amount of CO2 compared to this benchmark that is released by each country because of the consumption activities in these countries. And I want to stress a bit, I know we had like internal discussion on, on this, but for me, I, I want to stress the need to look um, at, let's say, the emission of CO2 in this case, in terms from, from the consumer point of view. So to, to look at really what is the responsibility of the countries because of the final consumption activities of their residents is a scientific need in my view, which may, con may not be politically uh, feasible. But why this is really important? Because as you can say here, this is a very stupid example. This is like toys consumption in the world. This is like the geography, mm -hmm. let's say the, the, the border of the, of the countries are defined by the amount of toys that are consumed in these countries. So you can see that not everything that is consumed in the West it is actually produced in the West. And I'm sure you all know this. And this applies to many different commodities. It's not just about uh, toys. So that's why I think there is a need to stress this consumer uh, point of view. But then, of course, as also Paolo mentioned, to do a partial analysis and a partial accounting system is not going to help us. It's only going to be an obstacle. So really, what is needed is a system that applies the same rationale that I described to all nine boundaries, to be able, in the end, to distinguish countries in between what are like earth system damaging countries, meaning that they are using more, let's say they are like deviating from this baseline uh, value that we can determine, and earth system maintaining countries that are those that are using less or that are even producing uh, resources and like contributing to the health uh, of the of the earth system now of course we have many challenges to do this there is a challenge on how to integrate all these different information in a single value we are also uh, discussing what could be the role of uh, space activities and space uh, data and natalie will speak more about this so it's a lot of uh, challenging question that we have uh, in front of us and we hope you can help us uh, to to address next to this biogeophysical element, there is the economic element, because this is a very uh, important uh, issue to highlight. From the moment that we discover that our resource that we thought was unlimited and uh, inexhaustible is indeed limited and can be destroyed, mm -hmm. then of course things change, everything change, and the relationship that we have as consumers towards these uh, resorts must change uh, completely. So our idea is to couple the biogeophysical element with an economic element. It can be in a form of a compensatory scheme or a new market system to really enable an economic compensation flows from the earth damaging countries to the earth maintaining countries. And we really would like these to be not based on pre-allocated quotas, uh, and punishment um, activities, but really on incentives uh, to promote the creation of uh, benefits to the Earth system. And finally, we know uh, from several studies, including the fifth assessment report of the IPCC, that economic methods are limited in what they can do to ensure equity, uh, justice uh, in the use of resources. So there is a third element to this accounting framework, which is, which is the legal element, a correction system to enable uh, equity and justice among uh, everyone on the planet on the relationship we, that we have with the Earth system. Alessandro, mm -hmm. let, me, let me say that I forgot to tell, you, to, to tell people and remind that today is Climate Justice Day at the COP. So <laughs> this is one of the important uh, reminders for us uh, within the the, the 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 common house of humanity. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Actually, didn't know. So, <laughs> so finally, this 
well, this legal element, of course, has to be coupled with the fourth one, the uh, governance system. And we have heard uh, the minister before speaking about this governance system and the need to have this uh, structure around the UN, uh, the UN system. So these, in essence, are the four elements uh, of this ESAF Earth System Accounting Framework. These are the elements of our journey in the next years, I would say, uh, to which I, I invite you to collaborate. This, I'm not going through this, but this is just like the initial list of questions that we have for ourselves to be able, I mean, to, to address. And an important one is the third one here is like, who should we engage for such a research collaboration? And are you interested in joining these uh, research uh, activities and research collaboration? So that's it uh, from my side. If you want more information, you have like email address in there. And thank you so much. The next person uh, to, to, to talk will be myself, uh, but I, I, I will just... Uh, uh, are we there? Yeah, just a minute. Okay. Um, so one, one of the... the, the um, I, I'll pick just the, the, the questions that Alexandro uh, made. And uh, I, I'd like to talk a little bit of the relationship between the, the, the common home of humanity and the UNFCCC framework that uh, is ba basically the reason why we are here under the, the conference of the parties. And um, indeed, what do we, what do we know and what we, is, that, is that the, the UNFCCC, the Kyoto Protocol, and within one or two years, the, the, the Paris Agreement are probably one of the most, are, are very complex instruments, um, both legally and scientifically, uh, that actually involved, involved thousands of experts, thousands of experts to, to, to actually um, look at uh, uh, how climate uh, works, uh, the relationship between the different uh, uh, variables of the, the, the atmospheric system, the economic system, the social system. And, uh, but, but indeed, that is one of the problems, is that the, the, the focus of the UN FCC, uh, FCCC framework uh, is basically um, focused on greenhouse gases. That's the accountability, that's the coin, that's how, how we actually uh, uh, talk about uh, the, 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 the measurement, the, the contribution of the different countries, uh, either positive or negative. So we, we, we actually have a partial approach because we, we focus on climate, we focus on atmosphere, we focus on the greenhouse gases. And we could talk about, as uh, Paulo did, uh, on, 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 on the, the, the red uh, plus um, uh, system of uh, uh, protection of the forests, we can talk about the acidification of the oceans. But basically, the point is that we, we look from the climate to the other parts of the systems. We're not actually looking at the Earth system uh, and to their relationships, because our focal point is, uh, is the climate and is CO2. So we need uh, an evolution from to, to an integrated approach where indeed climate is part of um, of the system and uh, and not the, the the starting point from our view and we also need and that is one of the biggest uh, challenges of this project is that we need to simplify the accounting system uh, that is relatively easy when we look at co2 uh, and the other greenhouse gases but when we look at an overall uh, earth system it gets much more complicated even though the planet boundaries and other uh, uh, and and other uh, uh, features from the ecological footprint and uh, uh, other other uh, um, uh, other perspectives give us an idea on how to proceed so who who are we uh, for now who, who is this uh, Who's, who's, who's running this idea of uh, a common home of humanity? 
basically we're talking a, about a multidisciplinary group of uh, um, people related with with the, with the law uh, so we're talking about jurists the earth system scientists environmentalists economists social scientists philosophers who stand behind the creation of an innovative and visionary initiative so this is who we are uh, and as you can see uh, it's quite a large um, a large uh, uh, group of, uh, of people and um, we do like to have the legal recognition of the Holocene like state of the earth system and the, the idea is to have uh, to, to, to frame uh, to get a layout of the guiding principles uh, for the construction of, of the earth system accounting framework uh, let me tell you that at, we, we're discussing ideas like uh, having a, a common heritage of this this Earth system, or having a UN resolution on, on the on, on the Earth system, and this is not independent of what is happening here at the COP concerning climate. is is just another level, another I would say complex negotiating level uh, to 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 protect um, the, the 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 Earth. Um, so right now we are uh, several partners already involved uh, the, 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 the Republic of Portugal so basically the, the, the Portuguese government uh, several universities uh, the universities in Portugal uh, such as the the, the, um, uh, the University of Porto Coimbra the University of Lisbon uh, the Environmental Special Agency the Global Footprint Network uh, groups of scientists uh, within future Earths, uh, and Stockholm uh, Resolution. No, 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 the other Siena, Siena, uh, Siena, Siena, Siena. Yeah. <laughs> the Earth Link, yeah, uh, and the Stockholm Resilience Center, uh, and and Zero as um, also uh, the, the involvement of uh, of the civil society um, uh, uh, as one association that uh, also would like to look at this uh, perspective, but we really want to have um, others involved in this project as you can see and we would like you to join us uh, we'll have a conference probably in september next year uh, which will be the the, the, the first global conference and um, there is a site still under construction called the common home of humanity.org uh, that was uh, launched today um, yeah, it's still starting but it's there uh and uh this is how it looks like and 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 really this is this is a project that involves a lot of uh different scientists uh also politicians uh, also uh, uh, uh the, the civil society in their uh, different uh, uh roles and um and, and uh natalie will continue now uh to talk uh, a little bit about uh other ideas that we have and also the what is kind of the basis of uh how which is the book uh sos treaty uh, that was recently uh, published and um, and that that you can also take a look at uh, with this proposal okay thank you Thank you very much. Natalie. Yeah. So my name is Nathalie Meuzy, and I'm part of this side event uh, for four main reasons, in fact. Uh, firstly, I contributed to the SOS Treaty book for introducing uh, the matter. Uh, do you hear me? It's okay. <laughs> um, in the preface of the book. Secondly, I'm the vice chair of this new initiative, uh, the Common Home of Humanity, which is also uh, an association. Thirdly, as already mentioned, I'm in charge of uh, sustainable development at the European Space Agency. And last but not least, uh, I must confess that this project deeply corresponds to my values as a human being, a citizen of planet Earth. So we are here at the COP21, having been called the COP of solutions. 
for the launch of this book, which is, by the way, more than a book, and which might be the beginning of something important for the Earth and for humanity. This book is a kind of enabler, a kind of catalyst. When its initiator, Paolo Magalhaes, had the idea to propose to consider planet Earth as a system and as a distinct object of law to be protected and managed as such, many discussions and brainstormings took place. With a variety of people, he should form different disciplines, and this is very important. We had to see how this could develop and above all to be implemented. And then the concept of the Earth's condominium, Earth's uh, common home of humanity emerged, and the pieces of the puzzle uh, started to be assembled. This resulted in a multidisciplinary work that we present today to a multidisciplinary audience, and we like the diversity of the audience. The SOS Treaty, in fact, arrives at an optimal time to act. Within it, you will discover the state of affairs of planet Earth. And if you can notice that many theories, political and legal instruments, and also tools, have already been developed in that sense to protect the environment, a holistic approach combining science and law was deeply needed. This was why the idea of this treaty of safe, safe operating space was born. Diversity and multidisciplinarity is important if we want to protect and even restore our common home, our spaceship Earth, we all have to join our efforts to change the paradigm in our societies, to empower people to reverse the preoccupying trends of the future of life on Earth, and to protect young and future generations. This is a matter of responsibility, of accountability towards our life environment. This is also a matter of sustainability, as already said. Sustainability of all living species and of human beings and survival for their activities too. Because if no life is possible anymore, no more human activities. People have forgotten the truth, but you must not forget it. You become responsible forever for what you tamed. This extract from The Little Prince summarizing the current situation. Human beings forgot about the responsibility they had to keep in order the only known place in the universe where they can actually live. They forgot that they had a duty of care. This duty of care, this responsibility and accountability we have towards our common home forms part of a global citizenship. At the Open Space Agency, we recently organized a one-day citizens debate in our 22 member states in Europe about space. It was the very first time that a space agency entered into dialogue with, which, with its main stakeholders, the taxpayers, the, the citizens. And do you know what were the words the most highlighted, Earth and humanity. And we were very surprised to discover that European citizens were thinking global and were committed and felt responsible for their 
overall environment. You can see some of the quotes here. Uh, they are talking about future, sorry, future of mankind, future of uh, planet Earth. Uh, they would like to uh, grow as a, a global humanity uh, and to develop a conscience, consciousness for humanity. And they also talk about common goods, and in particular, that space can be considered also as a common good for humanity. But what is maybe the most important is the last paragraph, uh, where citizens consider that the first most important guiding principles for open space activities in the area of politics and geopolitics should be global challenges such as climate change. Look at this. This is the Earth scene. Oops. The Earth seen from the cupola, what is called cupola, in the International Space Station. You must know that uh, to better live on Earth and above all to face the upcoming disruption of resources combined with a climatic disturbance, it is very instructive to see how it is possible to survive without atmosphere in outer space. For instance, in this International Space Station, uh, we are recreating a closed loop system, a life support base without which astronauts uh, couldn't live. We learn to live with an economy of means because resources are limited. In short, space teaches us how to live in a sober manner, like we should learn to go down here, to do down here. Space is also a key tool for observing, uh, measuring and monitoring uh, the Earth in all its components. You must notice that there are no borders seen from space. We now have more than 30 years of archived data from the Earth observation satellites that allow very sophisticated modeling programs. And the European Space Agency provides 60 persons of its Earth observation data on a yearly basis to update the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, report. Talking about Earth data, let me talk uh, about um, metrics. And for implementing the OSOS Treaty, we will need metrics and we will need data. And space provides very sophisticated tools to feed, which can feed those metrics. Satellites constitute powerful and reliable tools to observe measure, mitigate, and monitor the Earth. We have a, an initiative called the Climate Change Initiative, which is an open data portal, sorry, uh, which everyone can access and download the data uh, which interested uh, them. And in this, you can find uh, many parameters concerning uh, the Earth system, um, I can mention aerosol, land, land cover, cloud, greenhouse gases, sea ice, ocean color, and so on. Uh, but there are many other parameters coming from space that can be integrated in the matrix. And I, I draw your attention on the CMUG, uh, bottom right, um, because um, this is a climate modeling user group that you can join and enrich and you can uh, exchange with them and uh, uh, further work with them uh, on climate change. So, as recently, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. As recently declared by our di Director General uh, Jan Werner, Space is not only technique, 
space is also emotions. And this is precisely thanks to emotions and to a collective consciousness that we can achieve something for our planet, for our common goods. And do you know what the overview effect is? Raise your hands if you know what's the overview effect. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so I will explain for the others. This is a state in which all astronauts, without any exception, are, when they are in space, physically and psychologically, and look at the planet slowly moving. They feel, at that time, very strong emotions, compassion and love for the Earth. And they wish to protect it. And when they are back down here, they continue their wish and act towards it. And there are now more than 550 astronauts that came back on Earth with this very feeling and wish. So we all know that the ecological consciousness was born when people saw the Earth from space, but they were only pictures, fixed pictures, fixed images. Recently, a mathematician and writer, a French national, Jean-Pierre Gou, had the idea to put together all Earth's pictures from a NASA satellite called Discover to recreate the overview effect for everybody so that actions can be taken for the Earth thanks to this very effect. So there is a website called Blue Turn, and since the 15th of November, there's now an iPhone application, Blue Turn 2, uh, that can be downloaded to, to have this effect in your hand. So, are you ready to experience the overview effect? It's 20 experience, so don't move. Is it possible to turn off the lights? It's, it's possible yeah. to not turn off the lights? Uh, no. <laughs> Est-ce qu'il est possible? Merci. So ready. Okay, thank And you. It's... Thank you very much. Thank you, Natalie. Um, and to, 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 
to go to space yeah. and uh, fortunately the satellites provide us these uh, these images uh, and now uh, we are ready for uh, for questions that uh, you you may have uh, and uh, and that's that's uh, that will be the, the the opportunity for you to to actually uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what you think uh, about a project and eventually uh, uh, get involved as I I just uh, told you. So please, the floor your is yours. Okay, there are two questions. Uh, is there a, mic a microphone? Three questions. Uh, Philip. Hello, hello. Is it working? I guess good. Thanks. Uh, Philip Emmy from the University of Utah. Uh, some people have been um, beneficially separating finance from economics. Um, as uh, So finance could be one of your basic elements. And as you were speaking, I was prompted to think about the kind of finance system that would be compatible with your basic ideas. Um, would earth sustaining people be the only creditors and uh, earth consuming people the only debtors? How would it all work for a financing system? Uh, no. can, can we can we go through through other questions and then and then uh, that the, the, the panel will will answer there was there's a second okay. question there. Okay, thank you. Rita Souza from University of Mino in Portugal. Um, we are now in the process of including philosophy and ethics disciplines in our economics course uh, so that people can, mm -hmm. our students can have a little bit more notion of the spaceship Earth you were talking about, yeah. So I would like to know a little bit more on the role of universities uh, explicitly in this project. Are you more focused on the law and economics and social science courses or in the natural science? Yes. How do you plan to work on it? Thank you. Thank you. Um, third question over there. Uh, third question. Another micro. My name is Lydia Morano from South Africa. I work for a faith-based NGO known as SAFSI. I have a, a question, and I'll be. I hope I'll be able to to pose the question. And I'd first like to, you know, bring across to you a word that I believe in general when we talk of you know the common home or sharing the common home I think it's missing for the rest of the world for me is respect that I think you know that can be measured but if you learn from in mostly indigenous communities and most communities in Africa there is a worldview that seeks not to manage. I'm, I've just I've been listening mm -hmm. yes. to management has been one of the key words that you are using, and economics using economic valuation processes or systems to try to measure and manage. That I find uh, difficult when you talk of uh, values, uh, world views. That, that don't necessarily seek to manage the world or, and its resources, but instead seeks to respect, somehow not necessarily seeing itself above natural resources, but as a way trying to adapt or actually learn and respect the system of the world itself mm -hmm. and then live according to the system of the world. So I see these two opposing worldviews or maybe they could try to work together, but I haven't heard you talk of the other. Yes. So maybe perhaps you could try to yes. bring that uh, mm -hmm. into to this Discussion. holistic approach. Okay. No, that's that's a good suggestion, but yes. I will I will make yes, which makes life difficult. I know it's difficult to to do, but then I I was just really trying to to see, especially most of the time, science yes leads the way, but. Mm -hmm. Can't we find a way to reconcile the, you know, science, the tangible stuff that we try to measure and the intangible stuff that I think are also important, but not measurable at the thank, moment. Thank you very much. 
Uh, can we go forward with these three questions, or uh, is there another one that I think is better? Okay, let's this. let's now uh, answer the, the 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 three questions, and then we'll go forward. Yes. Okay. Nat yes. Natalie wants to start uh, with the last one. With the last one so. Yes, I, I was very uh, uh, moved uh, moved by okay. uh, by your remarks and your questions, and uh, and indeed, uh, uh, science without consciousness. Uh, uh, doesn't mean anything. It was exactly the reason why I talked about uh, emotions, humanity, uh, consciousness, uh, responsibility, accountability. Um, and, and I think this shouldn't be decoupled from the scientific and legal approaches. This is the reason why we are aiming at reaching a, a holistic approach, comprising respect, but respect was implicit when I was talking about uh, humanity and consciousness. So uh, this is a challenge, but uh, be uh, ass assured that we'll try to concile all those parameters. Uh, I also uh, went to start for your question after. In the, in the discourse, I will also answer the first question after a, a little reference for uh, on the second. Uh, of course, what you are talking about is the same we are talking about. Uh, if we have time in the books, uh, when Professor Klaus Bosman talk about this, in the cultures, ancient cultures, the notion of humanity uh, in Orient, in Asia, in Africa, in uh, uh, South America, people for a long time, the cultures have this notion of global interdependence of there are many names to talk about this, Mother Earth, uh, 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 many names. Each culture put a, a different name on the same thing. You, you understand? And, uh, and the law has already incorporated this. The first guy to talk about the notion of humanity was Kant. Kant made the notion of a global family. He's a philosopher. Uh, another name for the same thing. Uh, the question is, we have to translate this feeling that across all womankind, along all this history of humankind to our tangible world. You understand uh, how science could talk about this and how law could, to, to, could talk about this and to identify the culture of all peoples uh, around the earth with, uh, with the science view and the legal view uh, uh, in the same framework. This is the great, the great sense of this project. It's, I think is a really an interdisciplinary project, but the feeling that moves you is the same that move us. It's what I can uh, tell you. And the way we are only talk about different language, different words to talk about the same thing. And to, but the goal is the same. Okay. Uh, uh, about the second question, about the financial question, we have the earth system. We have the social system and we have the economic system. The economic system is part of the earth system. If we disconnect the systems as we have now, uh, the, 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 the roles of the earth system uh, do not appear on the economic system. We have a fight between the systems, a uh, disconnection, uh, uh, disconnection systems, a no sense systems. So they are, we have a big discussion between us, between us if we should put money on this or not put money on this. The question is, if you do not put money on this, on the biosphere service, the trees will will be cut, uh, and we have no uh, albedo effect, we have no uh, evapotranspiration, and the most important in life will not worth nothing. We need to connect these systems uh, and to find one metric, one a way to measure, to find solutions for what <laughs> is really important for all gen the, the generations of humankind, or the future and the past also. This is, without to do this, Without connect the systems, we will keep on this way that we are now. Uh, but for this, we need a theoretical approach, a new theoretical approach that incorporates the systems. And the most big, the larger system is their system. And we are part of it. We are part of their system. It's something that the earth science say on the, on the papers of the earth system. They say humanity is part, is a component of the earth system. And inside the social, system we have the economical system we, you, we need to, to connect this uh, it, this this is the only 
answer I can give you. I, I hope it, it works. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yes. And, and for Rita, I, I will answer Rita okay. afterwards. Alessandro, you have a Just few words? Maybe a few words on, on what you say. I mean, for the time being, we didn't uh, consider to split the financial element from the from the economic element. For us, I mean, the idea, as Paolo mentioned, is that so if we consider this baseline, this uh, state, this ocean like state of the Earth system as the, as the state to be maintained and assuming we can quantify how much uh, human activities in each country are perturbing this, this state, the idea will be to put a cost on this perturbation so that you can quantify in economic terms how much, let's say, negative deviation you have from this Holocene state. And similarly, you can also quantify the positive amount if uh, countries are managing their system in a way that is contributing <laughs> in a positive way. So when you have these minus, plus and minus uh, in, let's say, biophysical terms, you can translate them in plus and minus in economic terms. And this will be the financial, well, the financial, this economic compensation scheme that will have monetary flows going from one country to the other, which could potentially be uh, used for external debt relief or for uh, investment in additional uh, preservation of the, of the earth system. That, that, that is, for the time being, the the initial uh, thinking that, that we have. But I would like maybe after if we can exchange uh, cards. So maybe later on we can. Now you are trapped on this <laughs> sort of question. <laughs> OK, fi finally, just to tell uh, Rita from Universidad, University of Min, uh, as you, you started as, as, as a, a, a group of people coming from with different backgrounds, from different places. Uh, but indeed, um, currently, that, that there are a few universities that, uh, that the, the, the people engaged in the project managed to, 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 to push uh, into the project. Um, but of course, the, the idea is that uh, we, uh, this, this will be also a, a framework for, this, for, for discussion between the scientists either at the individual level or at a, a collective framework. So in some cases, we have scientists that are just involved as individual members within the discussion. In other uh, situations, we do have the university giving their, um, their formal uh, acknowledge to, to the project. That's how things are working. So we have another question, uh, round of questions, one here, and let, let's hear and then we, we, we have to finish up, so. But uh, you, you have the time, please. Is there a microphone that... Uh... Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is um, Josep Lluís Salazar from the, from the Technical University of Catalonia in Barcelona, Spain. And, uh, but doesn't, that doesn't define myself because I have been for many years festival working in UNEP, precisely the beginning of several conventions, like uh, climate change convention and so on, and also uh, in the in the European uh, Commission and in the European Environment Agency. And um, I like very much this approach because this is really something uh, I have been thinking about for many years. Um, because well, this comes from the tragedy of the commons and the economy and so on. Uh, we have, I think you have, you have a very strong proposal. I like it very much and we would like, of course, to be involved. Uh, even uh, I try from my, from my university that, by the way, we, have, um, we are involved here in the climate change uh, negotiations as observer institution, because we have undertaken a research specifically. Yeah, it's important to mention because today is the Climate Justice Day, precisely because we have been working with a team of 100 uh, professors and students at PhD level in connection to, um, to carbon budgets and climate justice per capita. And we made the specific proposals country by country specifically for developing countries. 
and LDCs, of course. And well, um, I don't want to be more extend about this, but uh, really, um, but what, the, what is important is, of course, to keep this multi-sectorial approach, multi-science, humanities, um, and then, of course, we have the, the multilateral environmental agreements, most of them in the UN system, that, uh, of course, they are very sectorial. Some of them, they have more, they are more transversal, like climate change. It's, an, it's, an, it's a door open for many things, and this helps very much, like biodiversity, convention, and so on, and it's very important, this approach. Well, thank you very much. We will be talking about this for some time. Okay, thank you. Any other question you would like to make? Robert Gibson, um, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. It's a wonderful vision. Um, the question is whether one can see some near-term deliverables, because mm -hmm. if you could see those and work to them, then that will give confidence to move forwards on the bigger vision. That, so you that's the table from Alexandra. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I so, think yeah. th there is, uh, let's say, the, the immediate, let's say, two aims and goals that we have, um, well, let's say, Three. First of all, the, the first one is to organize this conference mm -hmm. uh, next year. So to mm -hmm. at least um, give a kind of uh, visibility and existence to, to this project uh, more than what we have uh, right now. So this is uh, one uh, short term target that we have. And hopefully in that conference get started more on the on the conversation. I mean, continue the conversation. The second um, goal that we have uh, is at least to define this research manifesto more properly and put it out in the scientific community to have like a, a call for uh, support from the scientific community and then the third one maybe uh, paolo you can mention um, something more specifically is the work that we want to start about the legal recognition of the earth system so you should say a few words on this Yes, I want to, before I say something about this, I want to make a philosophical approach to your question uh, using a Portuguese poet, uh, Fernando Pessoa. He said this is so bad to have practices, practices without theorics as to have theorics without practice. Is the same wrong, okay? So we need both. I think in this moment we have only practice with all theorics. The theorics are the same from 500 years ago when the concept of sovereignty is born. Okay? And we're still thinking on the same way with new problems. So we need new, new theorics to deal with these new practical questions. But of course, if we have theorics without solutions, practical solutions, we have no, it's the same problem. So when I think of this, of course, I have. If I have the, the support of footprint, I have the support of planet boundaries, I can have practice on the theorics and to find solutions. Uh, and this is why we have this conscious of practice and so this is, and your question, I, I think it's about this. The first step is of course, uh, to, to have a legal recognition in law by the common home in this conference. Uh, and the second is, is to start to working on the, we are already starting to work with in the coalition between uh, planet boundaries and, and global footprint in this new metric, uh, and as of course, and, and uh, uh, to start to collect supports to make this proposal in the UN. Uh, Portugal is the first country. We are already talking with another countries, and we need, of course, we need 195 uh, 95 countries to to make this proposal in in the UN. Of course, we must start. The book was uh, launched only last month. We have one month of, of existence, dot legal, but as a project uh, after the book. So we are in the beginning. It's what I can answer. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I believe uh, I have to thank you for uh, for participating in this uh, in this uh, event. Uh, I have to, 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 to thank also my colleagues. And uh, of course, the the the, the minister uh, had uh, had to go uh, after his speech in the beginning. 
but uh, I, I also would like to acknowledge uh, the role that uh, the new University of Lisbon and in particular also the Ministry of Environment had in the promotion of, uh, of this event. Thank you very much. And I hope this is just the beginning of uh, further discussions. Don't forget the conference we want to organize next year and, uh, and of course, all the exchange um, and, and the book that uh, may provide you some ideas on this uh, topic on, on, on saving the earth through the, the, the SOS Treaty. Thank you. Francisco. Okay. And just to say that you have in the chairs flyers on the book and even like some order form if you want to order the book with so 20 with 10, 20 percent discount so you have oh, it okay. like in the only today chairs. no no it's not only today. <laughs> <laughs> no.